Hello everybody. Gas emissions from the eruption continue to cause haze in large parts of West Iceland, with areas over 200 kilometers away experiencing poor visibility and decreased air quality. And probably the biggest news, the inevitable has happened. Increased restrictions. The eruption site will now always, for the remainder of the eruption, close at 6 p.m. As recently, a select few have been really disobedient, making the jobs of our rescue teams unbearably hard. Of course, this is annoying, as now, visitors who have and would always follow set rules don't have the same freedom when visiting the site. But if we look at the bright side, the eruption site at least wasn't closed entirely, and this also means our rescue teams don't have to work as much during night hours, so they can instead have improved workflow during the opening hours. Those were the news in the past 48 hours. Let's check out the details. So, the haze I talked about in my last upload is still present, and according to weather forecasts, it won't decrease until on Tuesday, when the winds pick up. Most of the haze is made out of sulfate gas, which mixes with fog, creating really poor visibility. Sulfur dioxide is only detected closer to the eruption site, but both gases can cause people to feel lightheaded and tired, get headaches, and get irritated in eyes and throat. Our experts have not posted updates on official measurements since July 18th, but back then they estimated the lava field to be 0.92 square kilometers, and the volume of erupted lava to be around 9 million cubic meters. The lava output at the time was measured to be 8.7 cubic meters per second, but as those measurements were done over a short time period, the margin of error was large, or 5 cubic meters per second, so it's probably best to just say around 10 cubic meters per second. Since those measurements, the output doesn't seem to have changed, so we can estimate the current volume of erupted lava ourselves. It gives us around 12 million cubic meters. It's much harder to estimate the area ourselves, but it has probably covered more than one square kilometer by now. The current activity around the crater is really interesting. As we can see, there's only one visible outlet from the crater, which doesn't flow from the brim, but instead out of the bottom of the crater. Now that's on the north side of the crater. Then, around 8.08 a.m. local time on July 23rd, lava burst through the west side of the crater, creating another visible outlet. Then, at 9.36 a.m., lava suddenly bursts through the lava field rather far from the crater, adding another visible lava river. This tells us that most of the lava flowing out of the crater does so under the lava field, sometimes breaching the crust and flowing on top of the lava field. This activity is classic and allows the lava to flow much farther, as hardened lava is a really good insulator. The lava lake, which formed on July 19th, is still present, and most likely feeds lava into underground tubes which mostly flow south, but we can see a glimpse of one of these rivers on the livestream cameras at 11.52 am. The state of the lava field up north is unclear, as our experts haven't released new updates and we can't see it on the livestream cameras, but it most likely continues to expand slowly, as most of the lava is going south. Tomorrow, on July 24th, we reach the two-week mark of the eruption, and since July 13th, output hasn't changed much, so we can't really tell if the eruption is any closer to ending. Volcanic unrest has also been stable since July 13th, only having a short up and down phase on July 19th when the crater collapse occurred. So, the eruption just goes on and we get to enjoy it, either through watching live or visiting ourselves. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video and thanks for watching.